All right, what's an evaporative emission system? And for most of us that are mechanics, why does the check engine light come on when the guy at the gas station needs the gas cap off? So we're going to cover the evaporative emission system, which is the reason that the check engine light comes on when the guy at the gas station needs the gas cap off. We're going to look at the whole system. And all the parts first. We've got a gas tank with a fuel pump. We got a filler neck with a fuel cap. We've got a fuel tank pressure sensor that monitors pressure in the tank. We've got vapor lines from the fuel tank to the charcoal canister. We've got a vent solenoid that will vent or prevent pressure from building in the system. We've got a vapor line to our purge solenoid which leads to the engine. So let's go over the operation of the evaporative system. On a normal day, on any given day, fuel vapors are going to evaporate and that's what the little orange dots are here. And it's amazing that we can walk through a parking lot and not smell gasoline thanks to the evaporative emission system. Those fuel vapors make their way into the charcoal canister that's filled with, guess what? Charcoal. And the charcoal acts as a sponge. It absorbs and traps those vapors. And we have a vent solenoid, which is normally open. That means when it's not energized, it's open. So as the tank heats up and gases expand, the fuel vapors are trapped in the charcoal canister, and that expanding air is allowed to escape through the vent solenoid. When we start our car up after it's been sitting and the charcoal canister has been trapping vapors, and it'll be trapping vapors even as we're driving down the road, the purge solenoid is a gateway to the engine. So this line will continue to the intake manifold, so when the car is running, there's manifold vacuum. And for those of you that aren't familiar with vacuum, it's a sucking force. So <clears throat> when the car's computers decide it's time to evacuate or remove the fuel vapors from the charcoal canister, it opens the normally closed purge solenoid. So engine vacuum is able to draw the vapors from the charcoal canister into the engine and burn them so they're not wasted. Now, why does the check engine light come on? This is, this is a little more complicated and the computer, the federal government has told auto manufacturers that they need to monitor this system and check it for leaks. So the way that the car checks for leaks when it's decided to do a leak check is it closes the normally open vent solenoid. So the PCM provides power and ground to the vent solenoid, vent solenoid closes. It opens the normally closed purge solenoid. So now engine vacuum is pulling a vacuum on the, on the evaporative system. So right now we're experiencing atmospheric pressure. As the engine starts to draw air out of the system, a vacuum opens in the tank. The engine controller is aware of this because it's connected to the fuel tank pressure sensor. So it sees a vacuum draw. After it draws a specific vacuum, it closes this back up and it waits and watches to see whether that vacuum falls off or decays. So it starts running a timer the minute that it reaches that vacuum. And if the, the evaporative system can hold that vacuum for that specific time, the test picks, you no know, check engine light. But if that vacuum falls off for any reason, and it could be as simple as a little tear in a hose from dry rot, allowing atmospheric pressure to come in, vacuum will decay or the pressure will go back up to atmosphere and it will not pass the test. If the guy at the gas station leaves the cap off or not tight, we're talking about a two inch diameter hole here or an inch and a half, and it will never achieve the vacuum that it's trying to reach. So it will set a code that's a large leak, an evaporative large leak, where a tiny hole like this, it may achieve that vacuum, but it can't hold it, and it may set an evap code that's a small leak. So that's one way that auto manufacturers monitor evaporative systems.